In this lesson, we're going to cover how to place balloons in a drawing and also create a parts list. I'm going to open up an existing drawing file. From the Chapter 6 Exercise folder, I'm going to click on the subfolder called Engine and I'm going to change my file type down to an IDW file. And this is where you'll find the engine.idw, so go ahead and we'll open that. And inside of this I just have a single view and what I want to do now is place some balloons. So I'm going to change the panel to the annotation panel. As we scroll on down we have a balloon tool. And if I go to that drop down list you'll actually see that there are two tools underneath there. But we're going to start off, we'll do the simple balloon first. I'm going to zoom up tight here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select down a given component. And once I do that, the Build Materials property is going to pop back up. And in this dialog box here, this is where we're going to determine what information are we going to be placing the balloons on. We have two different options here for the view. We have the structured and parts only. So if it's structured, this is going to be working with sub-assemblies and do we want to call the sub-components of that sub-assembly out, for example 5, 5.1, 5.2, or if we did parts, everything is just going to be numeric in value, for example 1 through 30. If you have some older drawings that you're working from, older parts, you can go back and create some legacy data. But in this case, let's go back and we're going to pick on structured, the default. Go ahead and click on OK. So in this case, as soon as I have my balloon placed where I want it, right click continue. The balloon will be placed. And you just kind of work your way back through. In this case, you'll notice that the same balloon number was called out there. Let's see if we can pull off another part here. And let's see why that is the case. Well, the reason that both of those balloons are number five is that they are referring to the exact same sub-assembly here. And, and we'll take a little further look into that when we uh, do an auto balloon and a parts list here. Now the balloon numbers themselves, this number is actually coming from the assembly structure. So in this case, the carburetor, this was the fifth part placed into this subassembly, and our top part here was the ninth component placed. So we can go back and you can override that if you either double click or right click over that balloon, and we can edit that balloon. And from the edit balloon dialog box, you can override the style. So in this case, the default is circular. You can go back to you want the two entries and by default the bottom number is going to be the quantity and later I'll show you how you can change that from the style and of course hexagon, no balloon or we can have a underscore underneath the uh, balloon value down here for the override. So if I said I really want that to be item number 22, go ahead and click OK. It's now item 22. So I'm just going to right click again and edit that balloon. If I did the override option, you'll see that it changes the balloon number, but the override, it would not override the parts list, so they would be out of sync. So in this case, I'm going to double click on them again, and let's change them both back to nine, number 9. Click OK. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and delete those balloons just by pressing the delete key on the keyboard. And what I want to take a look at now is going to be the auto balloon tool. So from the balloon drop down, select on auto balloon. And in the auto balloon dialog box, we're just going to kind of follow the prompts here. So select a view. So I'm just going to pick a point inside the view that I want. Let's just pan this over so we can see it a little bit cleaner. So add remove components. In this case, I'm just going to do a crossing window. And I'm going to select all of the components that I want to balloon. Ignore multiple instances is checked. So in this case, if you have, for example, a bolt in there five or six times, it will only balloon it once. And then for the placement option, 
we have a couple of different options here. We'll take a look at them. So the default is horizontal. If I change it to vertical, you can see as you move the cursor around, you're getting the preview. You can also override the spacing if you wanted to, see exactly what it's going to look like. Or if we went with an all around method, as you move the cursor, the balloons will adjust accordingly. So before I pick on a point and place those balloons, I want to go back to the dialog box. You'll also notice the bomb view the, is where we have the same scenario that we were talking about in the previous section with just an individual balloon. So structured or parts only. In this case, we're going to do structured because we do have some subassemblies. I want to take a look at that. So I'm just going to place in these balloons just by picking on a point. And let's go ahead and click OK. And the balloons are placed for me. So if I zoom back up on these, you'll notice the balloons were again automatically numbered. Now what I can do is I can drag those arrows as I go back and point it to a new part. The number will change to reflect it. So which is very interesting, right? So most AutoCAD users, the balloon is actually driving the information. Not so with Inventor. The information from the balloon is actually being generated from the part that we are designating that balloon to. So we have the same style overrides for these balloons. If I again double click or right click, I can go back and edit that balloon. So we have the exact same information. In this case, let's go back and place it with the, uh, the dual, two entries. And let's zoom back up there. You see that we have two of those in there. Now, if you want to change that, it's going to be under the format pull down. Click on style and standard editor. Now from the style and standard editor, we can go back, select on balloon. In this case, we're working with the balloon ANSI. And this is where we can designate exactly what's going to be happening inside that balloon, the text size style for the different shapes that we have. And this is where you can designate what properties are going to be on the top or the bottom. And you can change that with the property chooser. Go back and designate the top and the bottom. So in this case, I'm going to click Done. And we won't save the changes to the style here. And let's change this style back and to the No Override. Now these balloons, you can go back and you can move them around as needed, as I was showing before. But sometimes as you're doing that, you may not necessarily have them aligned. So what we can do is there is an alignment option. So I'm just going to grab this balloon and let's pull it up a little bit higher. Now I'm going to select that balloon first. And then I'm going to hold down the control key, select my other balloons in this case. So I'm going to select the top balloon and then I'm going to designate the three other balloons to be aligned to it. I'm going to right mouse click and under align, in this case we're going to align them horizontally as shown here. Now there's no constraint applied to that. I can still go back and I can move these around if needed. The other option that you can do is you can right mouse click on any one of those balloons and we have an attach balloon from the list and what that's going to do it's going to bring up our parts list this is where you can designate if I want to have a balloon hanging off of another balloon. So example, if I want to have balloon number eight on there, go ahead and click OK. Now as I move my cursor around, I can designate which direction I want that to go. In this case, I'll just place it off to the right. Now let's take a look at creating a parts list. So important to note here, to generate a parts list, you do not have to have balloons placed first just most people do, but you do not have to do that. Again, from the annotation panel, right underneath balloon is parts list. From the parts list dialog box, I'm just going to pick a point in the view. And in this case, 
We also have a couple other options here in which direction do we want to have it wrapped. If we want, in this case, I'm going to take all the defaults, click OK. And then I'm going to place the parts list in the upper right hand corner. And you'll see that we have some information in, that's automatically populated here for us. If I either double click on the parts list or right click and click edit parts list, in the parts list dialog box, you'll notice on the left hand column here, there's a balloon in some of these and others do not. So what that is designating for me, the ones with the balloon in here, those are the components that actually have a balloon placed on them. So that's answering the question, did I balloon all of the components inside of this drawing? So from here, you can go back and you can do the column chooser. From this case, this is where you can add or remove columns. You also have the option to do some group settings. If we want to group some information together, we can go back and you can do a sort. So if I wanted to sort by quantity or part number, you could do that. We have an export option. So if I want to take this information, we can export it to a bunch of different databases, including Excel. And lastly, we can do some renumbering if we wanted to. The other options here, they're, uh, they're grayed out for right now, and some of these we'll talk about in later lessons. But you'll also notice right now the description for a lot of these are blank. So the description is coming from the metadata or the iProperty information for the given parts. So in this case, I could come back here and I could just type in some information in this case, I'll just do steel, and you notice that it's blue. And what that blue is designating for me is saying that that information is only existing here inside the parts list. It's not in that metadata. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete that. And let's take a, a look at a better way of doing that. So instead of just overriding the parts list, the better way to do this is I'm going to right click and click on bill of materials. Now the bill of materials, this information is actually going to drive back to that metadata. So from here, this is where I can also do some designations like I was saying before. So let's go back to that engine case description. So now if I type in steel and click done. And if I just happen now to double click on the parts list, you'll see that information is not blue. That information was actually written back to that specific part file. Now, last thing I want to talk about here is I want to designate and show all of my subassemblies or an indented bill of materials. So again, if I'm going to go back to the bill of material option, from the structure tab, I have a view options. And from here, I want to click on View Properties. And right now, I'm only showing the first level. So if I change that to All Levels, click Done. Again, we'll see nothing at this point has happened in the Parts list. If I double click on the Parts list, you'll notice now I have a plus in front of these subassemblies. So if I can go back, I can expand the ones I want. I'll just do a couple in this case. Click OK. The parts list has now been expanded to show those children as well. And you can also see what happened now to a lot of the balloons are now the, the, the 4.3s and the 5.1s like I was talking about before, showing that these are actually pointing to the children of that subassembly. The last thing that I wanted to show is the bill of material information that we pulled out here. We can also do that from the file itself. So in this case, I'm going to expand the drawing view and I'm going to open up the assembly file. Now from this assembly file, under the tools pull down, I can go down and select bill of materials. Now from the same bill of materials, you'll notice that the steel 
was designated back in here. So let's change it to casting. And we'll click done. And now if I go back to the drawing, you'll see inside of the parts list, it's showing up as casting. So that information was written back to the part file, the assembly file, and also updated here in the parts list.